Hasselhoff with Bellas TV, and today I have the honor of interviewing my dad, David Hasselhoff. Dad! My dad, David Hasselhoff. I know. Is <laughs> That's that weird? funny. So weird. <laughs> yes. I know. You look very nice, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. I love your outfit. Very spiffy today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> so, I know you just got home, and you're back from Europe, and you're just traveling all over the world doing everything. You're quite the entertainer, of course. So, I wanted to ask you, how did you... First, you know, I never actually really asked you this. How did you first get into acting? I saw a play called Rumble Stiltskin when I was about seven years old and uh, said to my mom, I want to do that. And uh, so the first show that I kind of auditioned for and got in was Peter Pan. And it was in Atlanta, Georgia. And I played a, a lost boy. And the character that I played was called Nibs. And the theme of, of, uh, of Peter Pan is in that you want to fly, you won't grow up, you don't want to go to school, but you want to fly. And um, I just fell in love with the uh, theater, I fell in love with the stage. I felt uh, at home on stage and uh, I'm still doing Peter Pan. I'm 62 now, I'm still doing Peter Pan, playing Captain Hook. But uh, I love it because I see the kids in the show, especially in the UK, and I see those kids in me. Mm -hmm. And cool story is that I walked in for the first panto. They're called the panto, which is a traditional form of theater in the UK that had it at Christmas time. Yeah. And this, all the little kids were wearing their, their name titles. And, the, and it said, Lost Boys. I said, What are you guys at Lost Boys? And, and I looked down and it said, Nibs. You're like, I and was I you. said, You're Nibs. That was me, you know? So wow. um, it's, uh, I got hooked at a young age, and I think it's a great place for other children to start realizing their dreams because you can act out, you can be whatever you want, and you can find out who you are by acting out different parts. And you can also get rid of your energy, your aggression, be happy, cry. It's magical. It's amazing after every show is over how the kids just ball like really? little kids. Yeah, because I think they, they know they have to go back to school. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So how old were you when you first started on? Seven. Seven years old. Yeah. And then how did you get into singing? I got into singing because I, I, I wouldn't stop singing. I just kept, Davey, Davey. Is that why I the sing? King of the wild frontier. I wouldn't stop singing. I would yeah. just sing in supermarkets. I sang, sang, sang. I know you, know? you do. And it was like, you know, and my mother sang. And uh, your mother, uh, my your grandmother. And she, she sang a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, she turned to me one time and she said, you got it. And I said, what? And she said, you got talent. I think you could be a star. And I said, thanks, Mom, because that's what I want to do. And she <laughs> goes, I know. Now I have to take you to every singing and acting class ever. Oh. So she did. She drove me everywhere. And she made my costumes. She got me in every possible show she could. She yeah, even produced shows in our basement. Um, so it, it, was a, it was a real kind of a family affair. Dad, as you know, was an incredibly outgoing person mm -hmm. who treated everyone with amazing respect. He always laughed at everything, mm -hmm. everything, made a joke of everything. That's, I think, why I'm still here and why my dad, you know, just passed away at 89, but he, he had a fantastic life. And he, and he, went, he went out with a, with a laugh. Yeah. I mean, he has to be buried with his watch. Yeah. And, we, and we said, Dad, why? Because I want to know what time it is. I mean, that's funny. Yeah. You know, he went out with love and passion and said, I'm going to go see Dolores. So it's cool. Um, if you realize that life is not fair and that you just laugh and you treat people with the kind of respect that you want. And it's so freaking simple. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you've obviously got that, and so does Haley. Yeah. And because we were brought up that way, it's just natural. I feel like, you know, in this industry, you can kind of get caught up in everything. And you, you've taught me to be able to just laugh everything off and just be optimistic on everything. And no matter how many times that door is in the close in your face, you just continue and continue and continue. What do you think the key to success is in, in this industry? Laugh. Yeah. And don't assume anything. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that anybody is, is going to give you a part because you're the best person for that part. There's always some other reason. Don't assume anything. Don't, don't trust anybody. It's, it's, 
It's actually a cutthroat, terribly difficult business because at the end of the rainbow is a big pot of gold and everybody wants that gold, you know? And gold to me is work. Gold to me is not money. Gold to me is stepping on that stage. It's an honor to be on that stage. It's an honor to be in this business. It's an honor to have cameras around you to able to, to communicate with kids at home who think that maybe their dreams won't come true. You know, so many kids have an outlet now uh, to the media. We have our own, we have the world as our internet. Mm -hmm. So you can create what you want the world to see right away. Um, it just happened to a friend of mine, a kid in Sweden just got a $40 million picture because he put his artwork on the internet and he did it all from his house. And uh, I'm doing a, actually a movie with this guy. And, and he said, can you, can you believe I'm actually working with a Knight Rider? I said, yeah, because dreams do come true. Yeah, it's true. So you just, you just got to have a real thick skin. And I think I told you in the very beginning, the best thing I can do is tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is how well you deal with rejection. And you know, you always expect the unexpected. I mean, <laughs> stuff happens <laughs> that you cannot believe will ever happen and then it happens again <laughs> but then something awesome happens right and the awesome far outweighs the, the failure and the heartache well I feel like with all of that you have so many different things going on I know you're always in Europe and you're traveling and you have your own talk show what exactly can our viewers see from you coming up in the next couple months um, I have a Swedish talk show that just uh, was up for the best talk show of the year in Sweden. I have uh, my own TV series called Hoff the Record, which is about David Hasselhoff has five ex-wives and flips out and moves to the UK and finds his illegitimate son. And it's, it's a combination of scripted meets uh, improvisation with, with stand-up comedians uh, like Curb Your Enthusiasm. That is going to be picked up and released uh, worldwide all over the world uh, in, uh, in June. I have a movie coming out called Killing Hasselhoff. I'm so excited for that. Which I found two years ago on my birthday. Someone said, I have a script called Killing Hasselhoff. I said, I love that title, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. What's it about? <laughs> and I found out I was one of the best new coming writers, up and coming writers, and now I'm collaborating with him on writing a series of movies about secret agent Hoff. Oh but my Killing Hoff is gonna be released sometime in September. And that is a spoof comedy, kind of like in the hangover vein about a celebrity death pool. And uh, Ken Young has me in the celebrity death pool. Whoever dies first in the death pool, get, you know, whoever you have in that death pool, you win money. And so Ken Young has me, so he decides to kill me nice. uh, because he needs the money. So he hires a hitman and finds out the hitman is gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's in love with David Hasselhoff. Love it. And, and um, a lot of stand-up comedians in that, you know. Um, Colton Dunn. Um, uh, um, who plays John? Lovitz. Huh? John Lovitz. Yeah, I kind of forget John Lovitz. John Lovitz plays my manager. Uh, Reese uh, Darby, Jim Jeffries. Uh, amazing cast. Hulk Hogan is really good. Um, we also partnered up with WWE, so we're producing that. That'll be out. Um, I got a seriously funny cameo in Ted 2 that, that secretly stars me in the Knight Rider car kit. And Ted, it's really, really funny. Um, I have a very strange video coming out uh, with Justin Bieber that is actually really, really cool uh, that he and Cody um, Simpson. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's their single together, uh, which is pretty funny because it's kind of across the board. But it's kind of like uh, everything's kind of happening at once. And I just got offered to write and uh, produce, and we've already booked in 38 theaters and the West End my own musical called uh, Last Night the DJ Saved My Life. Woo! It's based on Thank the you. 90s music and what happened in Ibiza. And based on the relationship between a father and his daughter. And so uh, I've got, it's kind of all happening at once and I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Well, that's, that's the Hasselhoff oh, way. We're opening up a, a villa in Bali. 
and next year a place called Basque. It's paradise, it's seven dive spots on the island. And I searched the world for the best place to uh, invest and I found some fantastic people so I bought a villa at Basque. Look it up online, it's an island. No cars are allowed on it, you can walk around the whole island. It's just paradise and there's nice. seven dive spots on the island. I can't wait, I have to go. Yeah. Well thank you dad for coming and you know with Bella's Magazine we're all about beauty and we like to ask everyone, what do you think defines beauty in the world? What defines beauty in the world is passion and, and class and laughter and respect. Um, you know, I, I find women who are, who, I find women beautiful. The ones that, that don't worry so much about being beautiful, but they worry about just laughing and about mm -hmm. listening and about um, respect and, 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 uh, and, and have a sense of class. You know, and I, I like women and I like beauty in, in people who, that, that are confident, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so many people are, are self-conscious, you know, and they're just not, they're not, uh, they don't believe in themselves, you know, and they should. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what happens with, with a lot of celebrities. It's like people think that they're stuck up or they're really jerks, but they're not. They're just insecure. Yeah. And it's so funny because they have the whole world. They got millions of dollars, this whole world, but they're insecure as a person, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I find beauty in, in people who are, who are not insecure. Uh, also, I think it's a good idea to work out, and I think it's also <laughs> a real good idea to, to eat right and drink right, you know, and um, it plays a big part in your life, it yeah. really does. If you, if you look good, you feel good. I know that, that I just had some knee work done, so I haven't been in the gym for like 19 days, and I'm already going, what's this? What, what's that? I hate this. this. Ew, you know? I'm so, I need to get in there and look good, and, and I look in the mirror and I go, yeah. And it makes me feel great. And I walk out, I can conquer the world. If I look in the mirror, I look going, oh my God, I got more chins than a Chinese phone book. <laughs> oh, I feel bad. And then I got to go out and, you know, correct that. But uh, I find beauty in, 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 I find beauty in just about everything. I know you do. Well, I love you, Dad. And I'm so excited that you came here today. Yeah. And so many great things for you. And um, you look wonderful. Hi, it's David Hasloff, and you are watching Bellas TV.